Hi everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to get the latest Prusa Slicer working on your FlashForge Adventure 4 3D printer. This procedure may also work for other FlashForge printers in the Adventure series, like the Adventure 3s, since I suspect they share the same firmware base. But I only have an Adventure 4, so if you have a different printer, you may need to change or adjust a few things. So to get started, First, download this Prusa Adventure 4 configuration bundle from this link on my OneDrive account. Place the file on your desktop or wherever you can find it easily. This is the file I created that contains all the data Prusa Slicer needs to generate G-code that will work with the Adventure 4. Next, download the latest build of Prusa Slicer from their web address, and I'll post a link to that in the comments below. There are installs for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Download the install that's appropriate for your system. And after it's installed, run Prusa Slicer for the first time. When it starts up, it will open up the configuration wizard. This is where you create a profile for your printer. You can safely close this window for now because all of the information can be loaded from the configuration bundle you just downloaded. Go to the File menu, Import, Import Configuration Bundle. Now select the configuration file you downloaded, and that step will set up quite a lot of things for you. So there's a lot of time savings right there. Now select Configuration Menu Preferences, then click on the Dark Mode Experimental tab. I like the dark screen, so check that option. Also in the Configuration menu, choose the Mode tab and select Expert. At this point, you should have a Prusa Slicer all set up on your PC, and I think also for the Mac or Linux. All of these configuration options should work across all platforms. But again, please let me know if you encounter variances. Let's have a quick look around. I'm still new to the Prusa Slicer myself, and there's a lot of other tutorial videos on YouTube you can watch, and I suggest you watch them. But here's the general idea. Up at the top, there are these tabs. Platter, Print Settings, Filament Settings, and Printer Settings. Platter is where you see and arrange your 3D print model, slice it, and enable other features and generate the G-code. Print settings, filament, and printer settings. These are where you set up all your printing parameters. Go to the Print Settings tab, and you should see the Adventure 4 0.4 setting in the field there. And if not, select it from the drop-down list. In like manner, click on the filament settings, and on the printer settings. And in each case, select the Adventure 4 setting from the drop-down list if it's not already shown. OK, at this point, your Fleischer should be set up exactly the same as mine. Open the printer settings tab again and click on the output options. Under the Other subcategory, you'll see all of the G-code post-processing steps I created. These are the fixes needed to make Prusa Slicer G-Code work with the Adventure 4. At the very bottom, you'll see post-processing scripts. This is an optional thing I set up on my PC, but for now, just erase that line. I'll say more about this setup a little later. You should now be completely set up and ready to go. So if you're printing PETG like I do, you should be good to go right now. Otherwise, carefully go through each of the tabs I've already mentioned and check through the settings, the speeds, the print temperatures that you normally use. When you make changes to any of the settings subcategories on the left, the subcategory name gets highlighted, so you can easily see where you've made changes, and it also says Modified up at the top. To revert back to what was originally there, just select that profile from the drop-down list. A convenient pop-up window shows you the old values that used to be there and the new values that you just recently set. 
To revert to the old values, select Discard, which will discard your recent changes, essentially reverting back to what was previously saved. I love this feature. If you do wish to save your profile changes, though, click on the Save Settings icon to the right of the Settings Name field and to the left of the big X. You can also save them to a new profile name, as it will give you that choice. If you make profile changes for one particular print, say one that you want to print slower because it has a lot of detail, you don't need to save your configuration changes to use them. Your modifications shown in the Settings tabs are used even if not saved, and those modifications are also saved with your model in the project file when you use the File Save menu option. At this point, you should be good to go to try a test print. Try printing something simple like a XYZ calibration cube. Here's the one I did in PETG using the settings you've already got installed. A lot of time went into figuring this all out, but I have to admit, I was a little apprehensive about doing my first test print. I had my finger on the Print Cancel button on the touchscreen as the nozzle lowered to the bed. But when it started printing the pre-extrusion line, my worries were essentially over. My point here is to take necessary precautions with your first print. I have the Raft option in Prusa Slicer turned off in this setup, just like in my flash print settings, because I don't usually print with a Raft. This is something you can get away with if your build plate has been trammed to be uniformly flat, which I've done using copper tape underneath. You can turn the Raft option back on if you like, though. It's in the Print Settings Support Materials option. So, on your first print, if everything is working correctly, you will first print a pre-extrusion line along the near side of the build plate. This mimics the pre-extrusion option in flash print, which primes the nozzle. In flash print, this line always printed too close to the actual print, though, and it always got caught up in it. So I put G-code in my start G-code list to create it on the edge of the build plate, and this is far more convenient. You shouldn't need to change this, but the custom G-code for the nozzle priming is under the Printer Settings tab under Custom G-Code. Scroll down past the Star G-Code until you see the code for the nozzle priming pre-extrude there. If you don't want that, just remove all the G1 commands, leaving just the M106 command at the bottom. While we're on the topic of Star G-Code, there's some other things I should mention. Prusa Slicer doesn't offer a way to set up two cooling fan speeds one for the first layer and another for the rest. So I added a 10% cooling fan command in the start G-code after the pre-extrude. And that's the M106 command we saw earlier. If you want to change it to some other value, or even turn it off for the first layer, change the number after the S. The S values are divided by 256. A zero would turn it off, and any other value is divided by 256. So, for example, a 10% cooling fan value, which is what I used, uses a value of S25. That's 25 over 256, which equals 0.1, or 10%. So here's another thing. Flash print generates an M118 command near the top of its own G-code, and that tells the printer the XYZ dimensions of your print. I could not generate this command by using any scripting technique, and the only effect the M118 command has that I could discover was to prevent flash print from transferring a slice file to the printer by Wi-Fi when the print dimensions were too big but I couldn't get rid of the M118 command because the Adventurer 4 won't print without it. So in my star G code, I added a placeholder default M118 command, which allows flash print to always send the G code by Wi-Fi to the printer. It just won't be able to double check the size for you. 
And that's not really a problem, since you can just verify that for yourself from the Prusa Slicer preview. The rest of the start and end G-code is standard, copied as generated from any flash print sliced model. So go ahead and give it a play. Load a model, slice it, and export the G-code it generates. And to print it, load the Prusa generated G-code file into flash print and click the print button as usual to send it to the printer by Wi-Fi. FlashPrint doesn't seem to understand files sliced with variable layer heights. In Prusa Slicer, you can tell it to print different parts of your model with different layer heights or different types of infill. They have this neat feature where you can overlay your print with configuration volumes where everything that appears inside the volume can change your printing parameters, such as layer height, infill settings, and many other things. FlashPrint's preview of that G-code, though, will be exaggerated. For example, this square XYZ cube, where I went from 0.2 millimeter layer height to 0.015 mid-print, FlashPrint shows an exaggerated height in its preview. No problem. Just ignore the flash print preview with regards to height. You can still verify it's on the build plate, but the appearance height you can safely ignore. Slice previews should be done now in Prusa Slicer. Here's another thing. The Adventure for touchscreen will no longer show how much time remains in your print or what layer it's currently printing. It just shows percent done and elapsed time. But I have found a way to get it to show what layer it's on and how many layers are left. And this part is completely optional. It's a follow-on step. If you're interested in this, I suggest you get Prusa Slicer working first, as already described. Then you can work on this next part if you choose to do so. This particular fix involves having Prusa Slicer run a batch script on your PC, which can be found and downloaded from here. I know that there are scripting facilities on the Mac and Linux, but I don't have those systems to test. So interested users may be able to figure out and write their own appropriate script for Mac and Linux by reading what I've done. My script is fully commented. If you get it set up for the Mac, and remember, Prusa Slicer already works, so this is a completely optional step. If you get it working, please send me your Mac Linux scripts, and I'll include it in the comments below. We're all sharing our work here. So now, continuing our discussion of this next step for the Windows PC only, download and install the said stream editor from this link. I believe Linux already has this command installed, and possibly the Mac too, since they're both based on the Unix operating system. Back in Prusa Slicer now, under Print Settings, Output Options, put the full path name of that batch script, called fixgcode.bat, in the Post Processing Scripts field. What this does when you export your G-code in Prusa Slicer, it will now open a run command window and ask you to enter the layer height of your print, which you can read straight off the Prusa Slicer sliced preview display. The value is in parentheses up here. Just to enter that value into the command prompt. The script makes additional changes to the G-code, and now the Adventure touchscreen will display the current layer it's printing and the total number of layers to print, which I find very convenient. My script file, fixgcode.bat, is again fully commented, so for you software-oriented people out there, check it out. My entire post-processing history was originally done in this script. After I got things working, I transferred most of it into Prusa Slicer. So there are parts that are no longer needed in the script file, and those are now commented out. OK, we're getting close to the end here. Prusa Slicer is really powerful, and I suggest you watch Angus's video on Maker's Muse and learn more about it.
And there are other YouTube videos as well. So I think that about covers it. Let me know if you give Bruce Slicer a try on your Flash Forge Adventurer 4 or 3 printer. Good luck, and let me know how things worked out in the comments below.